Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. In this video, we'll be looking at a couple additional examples of uh, solving for truss member forces using method of joints. We'll be uh, seeing how to uh, apply truss determinacy to first determine if the trusses in question are determinants, and then we'll be looking at how to uh, find um, unknown uh, internal forces by systematically moving through a truss um, one joint at a time, or as it's also known, the method of joints. So, um, hmm, what do we want to do? You know, what if we had something that's actually, that was actually uh, three supports? Let's say we have something interesting, according to a certain definition of interesting. What if we have something like this? So let's say we have a truss, something like this. Oh, if I can, I do want to get my lines lined up correctly. Uh, helps if I get my lines nice and parallel and aligned and all that good stuff. So let's see, so we'll have that, that'll come down like this, go up like this, and then I'm going to have this come down like this and be over here. And in terms of supports, again, let's make this kind of interesting. And I'll give it a roller support, a roller support, and a roller support up here. So this is going to be, like I said, a bit interesting. And a uh, roller support here. Then joints, let's just call these A, B, C, D, E, F. Or let's do label that a little better. F and G. So this is basically a cantilever truss. It's being supported from the left end and just kind of hanging out into space over here. And then dimensions, oh, I don't know. Let's put some dimensions on this. I really do like my three, four, five triangles, but uh, they don't have to be that. Let's maybe make this a 45 degree system. So let's say this is uh, 12 feet and then let's just make everything 12 feet. And uh, let's try to find, uh, let's say we want to find uh, all member forces using the method of joints. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So uh, 12 feet, 12 feet, and 12 feet. And I will need some forces on this. And let's just go, I'll just go ahead and put one big force. So I'm going to put a force at G, a downward force of, oh, I don't know, let's say 40 kips. There's a downward force of 40 kips applied at joint G. Okay, so we have our, we have all of our dimensions, we have our support system laid out. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is let's see if this is determinant. So determinant, question mark. Well, M, the number of members, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So M equals 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, our number of reaction forces, we have three supports, and each one carries only one reaction force. So R is going to be equal to 3. And then J is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So J is seven. So M plus R is indeed equal to two J. So this is determinant and stable. So it's determinant and stable. 
Okay, so I need to first get my reaction forces and labeling my reactions, I'm going to have uh, dy, ey, and ax. And ax here. So I can, I can knock out ax, I think, fairly quickly by just doing a summation of forces in the horizontal direction. So I want to first get, so again, as a reminder, what I'm trying to do in this problem is find all forces and all members. And for that, the best way to do that is going to be do, using the method of joints. So summation of forces in the x direction. The only force we have in the x direction is ax. And uh, that can, uh, and so that's plus nothing, so that it just equals zero. So ax is equal to zero. No problem there. Okay, so next, um, let's see, what might we do? Well, we have this force here and this force here. So I'm just going to do a summation of moments about point uh, D. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, um, so I'm going to do a summation of moments about point D. Counterclockwise positive. I have EY, uh, EY, this uh, reaction force here, and it's going to be positive because it's counterclockwise, times the moment arm length of 12B. Then I'll have my downward force of 40 kips times a moment arm length of 36 feet, and this is going to be a negative moment because it's clockwise uh, about point D. So plus 40 kips times the moment arm length of 36 feet, and all of this is equal to zero because this is in static equilibrium. And I can quickly realize that EY is just going to be equal to 40 times 36 over 12, or simply 40 times 3, or 120 kips. So EY is 120 kips. Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, thank you. Sorry, there should be a negative on here. Yes. I was seeing if you were paying attention. Yeah, that's it. I'll go with that. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah, it's going to be a, this is negative, and when you move to the other side, it becomes positive, and EY is indeed 120 kips. Okay. So then, let's do a summation of moments about point E to get the uh, reaction at point D. So a summation of moments about E, counterclockwise positive, I will have dy, which will be negative um, because it is clockwise. So negative dy times a moment arm length of 12 feet. And then, um, our force at G again will be generating a uh, will again be generating a negative moment. So that is 40 kips times its moment arm length of 24 feet. And so both of these are acting in a counter or in a clockwise direction about point E. So both of them have a negative on them, and that sums to zero. And so then dy is simply going to be equal to negative 2. When you solve for dy, you'll get that dy is equal to negative 2 times 40 kips, or negative 80 kips, or simply 80 kips downward. Um, so essentially, this thing is going to be uh, tending to rotate about, uh, about joint E. And then this is going to be, uh, this is going to be pulling this way, this is going to be pull, uh, pulling it down the other way, and those will keep the uh, truss in balance. And I can check these numbers by just doing a, sim a simple summation of forces in the y direction. I'll have dy, which is my negative 80 kips, uh, plus ey, which is my vertical force of positive 120 kips, uh, minus my 40 kip applied load at the end. So minus 40 kips. And indeed, all of that does sum to zero, which is what we would expect for static equilibrium. Okay. Joy. 
All right, so next, uh, I think I'm just going to start. So I want to get all the forces and all the members. And so uh, I think I'm just going to start at one end and work my way to the left, um, just working through the knowns and unknowns that I have. So I'm going to start at joint G and draw just a little free body diagram of just joint G. And in fact, I think on my big free and on my big uh, diagram here, I'll go ahead and label our uh, reaction forces. Ax again is zero. Dy is uh, negative eighty kips or eighty kips downward, and Ey is one hundred and twenty kips. Ey is one hundred and twenty kips. So. Let's start with joint G and move our way uh, across the truss. So joint G. Ah, let's see. So I'm going to have joint G here. And let us consider the forces on this. I have a 40 kip downward force. And then I had FCD and FFG. FCG, or remember F, uh, FG. Like so. And this is going to be a 1, 1, square root of 2 slope because it is at a 45 degree angle, uh, because we have uh, equal uh, length uh, sides of our triangle. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing, now I could start with the horizontal summation of forces in the horizontal direction. The problem with that, of course, is that then I'll have two unknowns, so it makes more sense to start with the summation of forces in the, hor in the vertical direction. So let's go ahead and do that. Summation of forces in the vertical direction. In the y direction, I will have negative 40 kips. Uh, negative 40 kips plus FCG. And again, recall uh, when I set up these individual free body diagrams, I'm just starting by assuming everything is in tension. And I know that's actually completely impossible. I mean, just looking at this, there is no way these, tr these forces can actually be true. I know that one of these has to be going the other way because like, the way they're drawn, the applied force here can't generate any kind, will not generate any kind of horizontal component. So the only thing generating any kind of horizontal component are these two internal forces here. And so uh, in, the, in the direction as indicated on this drawing, this joint is going for a ride. It's moving. It's, it's flying off the page and going into town. Um, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not properly restrained. But uh, that's fine. I'm just initially, I just assume everything is in tension in a truss. And if I get a negative number, I know that number is actually in compression, not tension. So no worries. So back to our summation of forces about, about joint G in the vertical direction. We have forward kips downward and then FCG. And we want not the entire thing, but just the vertical component of it. So I will multiply by the ratio one over square root of two. the ratio of the components to get the uh, y component. And that will then be equal to zero because this is in static equilibrium. And uh, so um, then FCG, uh, FCG, if I can manage to write a G properly, is equal to, uh, is simply going to be equal to, let's see, 40 and then times root two. So that's going to be 40 times the square root of two uh, kips. So FCG is 40 square root of 2 kips, and this is positive, this remains positive, so this is going to be in tension. And that kind of makes sense when we think about it. I would expect, uh, just looking at this truss, I would expect the top cord to be, this This truss is basically a negative bending, it's sort of acting as a cantilever beam, so I would expect the top cord to be in tension and the bottom cord to be in compression. That is what we would expect. So we have this, this is equal to uh, 40 root two kips, and that's in tension. 
Then I'm going to do a summation of forces in the horizontal direction on this. Summation of forces in the horizontal direction on joint G. So that will be, uh, let's see, I will have my uh, FFG in the negative direction, negative FFG. And then um, let's see, I will have FCG, the horizontal component of this, uh, now acting in the uh, now acting in the uh, horizontal direction. So and also negative still. So negative FCG uh, times the same ratio of one over root two to get the horizontal component. And all of this equals zero. And so then FFG, the force in member FG is going to be equal to negative FC, uh, FCG uh, basically divided by the square root of 2. So that is 40 uh, times root 2, or basically negative 40 times root 2 over root 2, or just negative 40 kips. And that is F, FG. So I'm going to go ahead and write that on my larger diagram. So this is uh, 40 kips, and that's going to be in compression. So I'm just going to continue moving through the truss. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, let us look at joint C now. So I'm going to go ahead and erase, uh, give myself some room on this board. Uh, any questions uh, as I'm erasing some things? Okay, hopefully this is fairly straightforward, just the direct application of the method of joints. And hopefully it's not too bad, as long as I don't make any silly math errors, which is certainly possible. All right, so the next thing I want to do, um, actually, I'll also erase this portion here, just so I have a little more room. I want to make sure I can get the unknown forces on the next joint, but I don't think that will be too bad. Now we need to figure out where we go from here. Well, we have a couple options. Um, let's see. So we could go to this joint here, but the problem with that one is that we're going to have a, um, we'd have three unknowns there. And using method of joints, I don't want to have more than two unknowns if I can avoid it on any given joint. That's probably best practice um, when I'm analyzing equilibrium at that joint. So I think, so I think instead I'm going to go to joint C because I know this force here in member FCG, so I'll have only unknowns this one and this one. So I'm going to draw out a little free body diagram for joint C. And let's see, so I'll have a, uh, my 40 uh, root two force in tension. Uh, 40 root two kips in tension like this. And again, it's at a one, one uh, square root of two angle. Then I'll have FCF and FBC. FCF in the vertical direction. And FBC in the horizontal direction. Then I can find these fairly simply. Um, just by doing, uh, let's start by doing a summation of forces in the X direction. I will have uh, 40 root two That is F a CG times a factor to get just the horizontal component, which is going to be one over root two. And that is positive because it's going to the right. And then FBC will be negative because it's going to the left. And all of this will then come to zero. 
um, because we are in static equilibrium. And FBC then uh, is simply going to be equal to, well, we, we multiply square root of 2, we multiply by the square root of 2, divide by the square root of 2. We are left with, again, just 40 kips. And it is positive, so this will be um, in tension, as we would expect. Again, this is kind of, this is a truss in negative bending and a cantilever condition, so a negative top chord should be expected. So 40 kips in tension. Then I can do a summation of forces in the vertical direction on joint C in order to get uh, the force in member CF. So summation of forces in the vertical direction. I will have, let's see, um, negative 40 root 2 times, um, let's say, 1 over root 2 again to get the uh, vertical component. And then um, minus FCF. And all of this comes to 0 then. And so uh, FCF as well will also be uh, 40 kips, except this time it will be negative. FCF is equal to negative 40 kips, or just 40 kips compression. So we now have FCF, and that is, again, uh, 40 kips. Let's do 40 kips in compression for FCF. Any questions so far? Okay, so next I want to move on to, uh, so okay, so I have this one, this one, and this one, and this one. I still need uh, a couple others. So I think next I will go to joint F. At joint F, let's see. So at joint F, I have a 40 kip force in compression in FCG, so I'm going to show that as compression on this diagram, I think. But I could just draw it as uh, I could just draw it as tension and then show it as negative. But either way is fine. So I'll draw this as uh, 40 kips to the left. That again is FFG. Uh, then I'll have a my 40 kip force also in compression from member FCF. Then um, I'm going to assume the other ones are in tension. Why not? And uh, FEF in the horizontal for this one here. And then FBF at a 45 degree angle. FBF here at a 45 or just 1, 1 root 2 triangle. All right, so next uh, I am going to do a summation of, oh, let's see. Well, be, uh, the easiest thing to do would be a summation of forces in the vertical direction. Summation of forces in the vertical direction. I will have uh, FCF, oh, and this one is R, 40 kips here. And this is RF, uh, FG. So a summation of forces in the vertical direction. I'm going to have a negative FCF or negative 40 kips. Um, and then plus FBF times a uh, uh, times a ratio to get the um, just the vertical component, which would be 1 over root 2. Okay, so then this is going downward. This one's going upwards. So that's good. So I can see fairly quickly that FBF is going to be equal to that same uh, 40 root 2 uh, kips. And this will be positive. Just double checking that. Yep, this is going downward because it's compression. This is going to the left because it's compression. Summation of forces in the vertical. Yep, FBF is equal to uh, 40 root 2 kips uh, in tension. and that will be tension. Then I'm going to do a summation of forces in the horizontal direction on joint F. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, summation of forces in the horizontal direction. 
Let's see, I'll have negative 40 kips uh, minus FEF. That's the one I'm looking for here. And then minus FBF times a, uh, it's times the ratio, times the necessary ratio to get its horizontal component, which is going to be one over root two. And all of this will of course comes to zero because this is in static equilibrium. And so, uh, let's see, FB, oh shit, that's a terrible uh, label there, FBF. So uh, then I can say, okay, well, negative FEF is equal to uh, 40 plus uh, FBF, or simply that 40 root two divided by the root two, uh, and those will cancel out, uh, or just 40. So in other words, FEF is equal to negative 80 kips. So for this FEF, I get uh, 80 kips this time in compression. Just And I get that again just from balance of forces uh, in the x and y direction on joint F. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, we'll keep chugging along then. So we have um, we have most of our member forces at this point. The only ones we're lacking are, uh, let's see, this one and this one. And we have a couple different ways to move forward. Um, so let's see, I think I'm gonna mix it up a bit. I could keep moving from the right to the left. I think I'm gonna mix it up a bit by looking at joint D though. So let me go ahead and erase this part here, leaving the FEF intact, and we'll look at, uh, um, all right, so continuing with this example, uh, let's do, uh, let's look at joint B. And actually, I'll move that a little bit to the left, or to the right, I should say. Give myself a little more room there, I think. So let's look at a equilibrium on joint B. Okay, so we have FAB and then FBE. Uh, and then I have a 40 kip uh, force in tension here uh, to the right in tension and then a 40 root two force here. 40 times the square root of two um, here with the slope of one, one root two. So I can start by doing a summation of forces in the vertical direction to get FBE. That will be a negative 40 root two times a one over root two. And then minus FBE, all that is equal to zero. So FBE is equal to, uh, that is just going to be, uh, bring that over its positive and then make it negative. So that is just equal to negative 40 kips or 40 kips compression, like so. So FBE is, is 40 kips um, in compression. Sorry about that. <laughs> so FBE is 40 kips in compression. Okay, so 40 kips in compression. Then I can do a summation of forces in the horizontal direction. So a uh, summation of forces in the x direction. I'll have negative FAB. Uh, and then um, plus my 40 root two times one over root two, the horizontal component of FBF. So 40 root two times one over root two. Um, and then plus the 40 kip force here. So FAB 
will be equal to 80 kips in tension. And this preserves our previous uh, discussion of how um, we would expect the top chord to be in tension and the bottom chord in compression. So this is, so, the so FAB is equal to 80 kips, which is in tension. So our only unknowns now are going to be uh, AD, AE, and DE. So we'll go ahead and erase this, and then um, we will uh, get those. Squeaky, squeaky. Okay. So 12 feet, 12 feet, and 12 feet. All right. So I'm going to move on to joint D, I think. That will be an interesting one. So joint D. Um, well, I will have uh, F, D, E. Uh, times a, or not times, just, uh, and then my FAD. And my downward reaction force of 80 kips. So, summation of forces in the X direction, the horizontal direction, can show that FDE is equal to zero. There are no other horizontal forces on joint D, so FDE has to be a zero force member, zero kips. Then a summation of forces in the vertical direction can easily show that FAD is equal to 80 kips in tension. 80 kips in tension. So this is 80 kips in tension. And then um, I just need to do one more free body diagram and I think I'll do joint A and that will allow me to get uh, the force in member AE. Once I do that, this problem will be complete. We will have all of the member internal forces. So uh, let's do a, let's do look at joint A. And I'm going to have my 80 kip tension force, horizontal to the right, AX, which is zero. I'll have my FAE, which is the, the last one I'm still looking for. And uh, that again is at a one, one root two angle. Uh, then I'll have a uh, tension force downward here of 80 kips. And finally, I can just do a summation of forces on the horizontal direction for this. Let's go ahead and then do that. Summation of forces in the horizontal direction has to be equal to zero. So uh, I will have FAE times one over root two to get the horizontal components plus 80 kips equals zero. So FAE then must be equal to negative 80 square root of two kips. Um, or 80 root, 80 root two kips in tension or in compression. in compression. And that is the complete problem. 
So again, with the method of choice, what we've done is we uh, found our reactions first, or at least as many reactions as we could. And then we started working through joints one at a time, just drawing individual small free body diagrams, isolating each joint, solving for unknown forces as we go until we've systematically moved through the entire truss. And that is the method of joints. All right, so let's look at a final example, solving trusses using method of joints. So I want to do something now that will be a little bit different, and that's going to be a problem that involves trusses that are um, externally statically indeterminate. So overall, the truss, this truss will be statically determinate, but uh, externally it will be uh, indeterminate. So let's do something like this. A frame like this and I'll go ahead and put some dimensions on this let's say this here oh let's make this um, oh let's make this 12 feet um, and each of these oh let's see let's make these nine feet so that way you have some nice three four five triangles lovely dimensions there Tanya um, anyway and then let's put some reactions on here. And like I said, I want to make this indeterminate uh, externally. All right, so let's go ahead and put some reactions on there. And let's say we have something like this. Let's say we have a pin, a roller, and a roller. So we have three supports, and we're actually going to have four reaction forces because of this. Now, uh, let's say there's a few uh, external forces applied to this. So let's say we have a, a 15 kip force here to the right. And then let's say we have, oh, I don't know, let's say a, a 20 kip force downward like this. So it's going to be interesting about this problem is that this is going to be statically indeterminate uh, externally, although the whole system will still be statically determinate. Now I'll go ahead and label some joints and I'll just label them A, B, C, D, E, and F. Fairly straightforward. So the first thing I and what I want to do is I want to go and get all of the interior uh, member forces. I want to get all of, and in fact, let's get the reactions as well. Let's say all of this is given, and what I want to find is reactions and member forces. So all of the uh, reaction forces, horizontal or vertical, from our uh, pins or rollers, and also all of our um, member internal forces in compression or tension. Okay, so let's go ahead and label some reaction forces. So I'm going to have CY and CX. Then I'll also have EY and FY. Um, we have a pin support here, so there's two forces, a horizontal and vertical. And here at E and F, we have roller supports, and so this is going to be a, uh, they'll have just one vertical force each. Now, let's first check, can, let, let me prove that this is statically determinant by saying, okay, our number of joints, J, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have six joints altogether. Our number of reactions is four, and our number of members is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So M equals eight. So M plus R is indeed equal to two J. And so this is uh, statically determinant. And uh, in case you're having trouble seeing why this is, uh, what makes this problem interesting, um, what makes this problem interesting is that if we consider the truss as a single rigid body, so ignoring internal member forces for now, if we look at just the reaction forces on this, well, we'll have CX, we'll have, let's see, CY, we'll have EY, and so I could call this global free body diagram or global FBD, uh, EY, I'll have FY, like so. Then external forces, I will have my 20 kip force downward, my 20 kip force there, and my 15 kip force to the right. 
And then of course dimensions will be 9 feet, 9 feet, and 12 feet and uh, a vertical distance of 12 feet. So I now have a free body diagram with four unknowns on it. I cannot solve for all of these using just rigid body equilibrium, uh, looking only at the uh, truss as a single rigid body. However, I can at least get the CX. I can do a summation of forces, a uh, summation of forces in the X direction, and that will leave me with 15 kips. This 15 kips to the right, positive plus CX is equal to zero, so CX is equal to negative 15 kips, or 15 kips to the left. So that's not, at least that one's not going to be too bad. So we have that reaction, but the problem is, if I then try to do a summation of forces in the vertical direction, I'm not going to have uh, anything I can use, or I'm not going to, I shouldn't say I'm not going to have anything I can use, I'm not going to have um, I'm going to have one equation with three unknowns. I'll have, if I do a summation of forces in the vertical direction, I will have CY, EY, and FY, each of those having a non-zero force probably um, at their respective uh, supports. And so uh, I'll have an equation with, uh, I'll have one equation with three unknowns. That's not going to work. I could try do, doing balance with moments, but that's not going to help me that much either because there is no point where, because I still need CY, EY, and FY. And there is no point where two of them will not generate a moment. They're all parallel, so that's really annoying. So I could take moments about E, and at that point, EY would not generate a moment about E, but both CY and FY would. I could take moments about C, um, and CY would not generate a moment, but EY and FY would. Or I could take moments about F, and FY wouldn't generate a moment, but CY and EY would. So I, um, ultimately, I am not mathematically going to be able to solve for either CY, EY, or FY using a global free body uh, diagram, uh, simply because it is what we refer to as externally uh, indeterminate. The entire truss is determinate, but the uh, it is externally indeterminate. Okay, <clears throat> so there's that. Now, uh, so we have this, but we, so do we just give up and go home? Well, unfortunately, no, we can, we actually can still solve this. We just have to use a little bit more creative methods than starting with our reaction forces. And I'm going to go ahead and put this CX is equal to this negative 15 kips. All right, so I'm going to erase this and then we'll give ourselves some work. Uh, some, we'll continue our work um, on finding the member internal forces. All right, so we didn't get much from our global free body diagram. We got one lousy reaction for us. Um, so we are in a bit of a pickle, it seems, but actually it's not going to be too bad, as we'll now see. So uh, with uh, we now still have three unknown reaction forces. Uh, however, we do at least know what, what uh, CX is, so that's something, I suppose. Um, so we just need to find some place to start. And um, so we don't have a lot of information so far. The only thing we really, we really know is our external forces and our reaction CX. So um, for lack of anywhere else to start, I'm just going to look for some location that if I do a summation of forces, I can at least get something. I can at least get some um, force uh, or some member force or some reaction. And what immediately comes to mind to me is joint D here. And the reason for that is if I look at joint D, well, let's consider what kind of um, Let's consider what kind of member forces I'm going to have on here. I will have an FDE, the force from D to E in that member. And again, I'm just assuming tension for all these. Um, and if we get a negative number, it's going to turn, turn out that it's actually compression. Uh, for member CD, I'll have FCD. Then I'll have member AD, or so, and so FAD. FAD here, and then finally I will have a 20 kip downward force. Now, at first this seems intractable. However, because these two forces, FCD and FDE, or because these, uh, or more precisely, because the members are perfectly horizontal, both FCD and FDE, I know that FCD and FDE will be equal to each other, and, and okay, I should say, because there are, we have we essentially, what we essentially have here is two sets of parallel forces. And so that basically, when you have like two sets of parallel, or two sets of, uh, not parallel forces, but two sets of coinciding forces, I should say, 
FCD is one pair, and uh, FCD slash DE is one pair, and FAD and the 20 kit force is another. So those are going to be equal and opposite. So in other words, if, uh, or, I, or I could look at it like this, I could say the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero or is equal to FAD minus this 20 kip force and that equals zero. And so FAD is equal to 20 kips. So I now know that there is a 20 kip tension force in member FAD. Now, unfortunately, I can't get FCD or FDE yet because I don't, I could try doing a summation of forces in the horizontal direction right now on joint D, but I really wouldn't get anywhere simply because I don't know anything about these horizontal forces yet. So I'll have to keep uh, working through this and I need, to, I need to now find another place where I can keep working. So again, I'm going to look for some other location, any other location where there would be only two unknowns. And what pops to mind for me is joint A. So let's consider a joint A. And hopefully it'll be apparent why I'm choosing this one. So let's look at what we have here. We have FAC, which has a slope, well, it's gonna be a three, four, five triangle, because 12, nine, et cetera, um, like that. So if you divide, in other words, if you divide by three, you'd have a three and a four, so it's a three, four, five, or simply three, four, five, like this. We also have FAD, which is in tension, so it'll be moving, pointing away from the joint. FAD, which is equal to 20 kips in tension. And then we have FAB, horizontal. So I'm going to do a, I'm gonna start by doing a summation of forces on the vertical direction. And the reason I'm choosing to do vertical first in this case is that if I do a summation of forces in the horizontal direction, FAB and FAC both have horizontal components. And so that would be two unknowns in one, equa in one equation. Meanwhile, if I do a summation of forces in the uh, vertical direction, I will have only one unknown FAC in that equation. So I'll have negative FAC and I'll multiply by the ratio of the slopes to get the y component. So that would be four over five. And then minus a FAD or minus 20 kips. And that is equal to zero. So FAC therefore, uh, FAC is going to be equal to 20 times, and it's going to, so this will actually, well, let's see. Um, I have these both pointing downwards. So yes, one of them does have to be, this, this FAC will have to be compression or, the, or in the reverse direction. So uh, let's think about that. So we'll have 20 kips times five over four. So let's see, that would be 20 over four is five. Five times five is 25 kips. Oh, and this would be negative. Bring this over, um, bring 20 kips over to the other, to the right side, divide by negative one, et cetera. And so we'll get negative 25 kips or 25 kips compression in number FAC. 25 kips compression. Uh, next, let's go ahead and do a summation of forces in the x direction on this one, on joint A, I should say. So summation of forces on uh, joint A in the x direction. I will have uh, F -A -C or FAB, and in the drawing, I have this pointing to the left, so I'll keep, so I'll, keep I'll put a negative on it. Although it, I'll end up also putting a double negative on it when I put substitute in the negative 25 kips. So negative FAB uh, minus FAC times three over five to get the horizontal component. And uh, those are our only two uh, forces on this joint that have X components. So that's going to then equal to zero, be equal to zero because we are in static equilibrium. So FAB then, uh, let's see, FAB is going to be equal to, uh, that's going to be FAC times three fifths or negative 25 kips times three fifths. 25 over five is five times three is, and is 15. So we have negative 15 kips. So FAB is equal to negative 15 kips or 15 kips in compression.
and this is kind of shaping out uh, how you would, uh, how you would typically expect a. Uh, this is shaping out to behave uh, how a trust how you would expect a trust like this to behave. It's not a simply supported trust, but still, generally, um, what you tend to have with trusses is the top chord tends to be in. If you have something that's going to be in overall positive bending, um, if you have something that's going to be in overall positive bending, the top chord will tend to be in compression and the bottom chord will be in tension if you have positive bending. And in the previous problem, we had a cantilever, so that's why we expected the uh, top chord to be in tension and the bottom chord to be in compression, because that was a negative bending. Okay, so uh, we got, we have FAB, we have FAC, we have FAD. Uh, now let's move on to joint B and get FBE and FBF. So let's move on to joint, uh, let's do B here. So joint B. Uh, let's see, so we're going to have 15 kips and it would be, it's in compression. Um, so that means it's going to be, uh, so, so if it were tension, I would usually draw this as going away from the joint, but because I know it's compression, I can draw it as going into the joint. So 15 kips here. And then B, uh, I will draw my other member forces as, uh, I will draw my other member forces as uh, tension initially. And then if I get negative, of course, I know they're compression. And so I have the other force, the 15 kip to the right, or the other external force, the 15 kip to the right. Then I'll draw my unknown member forces that, I'll, that, I, tr that I want to get through this joint, which will be F, B, E, FBE and uh, FBF. And I should probably put the slope on there. This will be a four, three, five triangle. Or a three, four, five. Okay, so I think it makes sense to first do, and I'm just dropping things all over the place, lovely. <laughs> So I think I will go ahead and uh, do a summation of forces. Oh, let's see, probably in the horizontal direction first, because I have, uh, again, because if I do vertical, I'll have two unknowns to start. And I would like to start by solving an equation with one and only one unknown. So let's go ahead and do um, summation of forces in the horizontal direction. So I will have both to the right, 15 kips times two. Because 15 kips and 15 kips. Then plus FBF uh, times the ratio to get it of times the slope ratio to get its horizontal component. Uh, three fifths. And this then equals zero. So therefore FBF is equal to, well, 15 times 2 is 30, and we'll bring it over to the other side, it's negative 30. So negative 30 hips times the inverse of this when I divide it over, uh, 5 over 3. So yeah, this would be 30, bring it over, it's negative 30, and then, um, let's see, yeah, so that would be negative 30 when I bring it over there, um, multiply the, by the inverse, by, or by, I should say multiply by the reciprocal, so instead of 3 fifths, I'll multiply by 5 thirds to cancel this out on the other side, and let's see, 30 over 3 is 10, times 5 is 50, so we have negative 50 hips. So FBF is equal to negative 50 kips, or 50 kips in compression. So we now have the entire top chord of this truss derived. Uh, oh, yeah, 50 kips compression. And then finally for this joint, let's go ahead and do a summation of forces in the, um, in the vertical direction to get FBE. So let's go ahead and do that. So summation of forces, in the vertical direction, I'm going to have FBE uh, plus FBF. Actually, I should put a negative on this because I'll put a negative on both of them because they're both going downward. Uh, minus FBF uh, times the ratio of the slopes of 4 over 5 to get just the vertical component of FBF. And uh, all of this must be equal to zero because we are in static equilibrium. So therefore, FBE 
if I bring this over to this side, it's positive, and then it's negative. So it's going to be, uh, so if I bring the FBF over to the right side, it becomes positive. Divide by negative 1 to get FBE by itself, or to isolate FBE. So this is equal to negative FBF times 4 fifths, or negative negative 50. So I almost have a triple negative on this lovely problem. So this is actually going to end up becoming a positive again. And so let's see, so that's positive 50 times five, uh, 4 over 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10 times 4 is 40. So we're looking at a, a 40 kip uh, tension force. So FBE should be uh, 40 kips in tension. I believe. Okay, I think next I'm going to look at uh, joint F and we'll, I'm going to clear the board and then we'll take a look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, keep chugging away at this. I left member, uh, I left joint D on there because we're still, we're going to have to come back to that one. So next I want to move on to joint F. Okay, so let's look at joint F. And this is where we'll actually be able to get one of our uh, reaction forces that we previously couldn't get. So joint F. Well, looking at the forces here, I have a unknown reaction, Fy, here. Then I have uh, some force in member EF, which I will assume is tension initially. So FEF. And then I have 50 kips. Uh, initially, if I had, didn't know what it was, I would assume it's pointing upward because it's tension, but it's compression, so it's going downward. So we have 50 kips like this, and that is our member BF force. And I also want to include my slope in any free body diagram, my slope triangle. So this is going to be a, a 3, 4, 5, as, as again, as always, at least with this problem. So 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so next let's go ahead and do, oh, let's do a summation of forces in the vertical direction. That way I will have only one unknown in my equation. So that will be uh, negative 50 kips, uh, negative 50 kips times 4 over 5 to get the vertical component, and then plus Fy. And all of this is equal to 0 because we're in static equilibrium. So therefore, Fy is equal to uh, 50 times 4 fifths, 50, time, uh, 50 over 5 is 10 times 4 is 40, so this is equal to 40 kips, which is in tension. Oh, actually, wait, uh, sorry, that's, that is not in tension at all. This is a reaction force, not a member force. It is simply equal to 40 kips in the upward direction. Or in other words, we get a positive value, so it, it is, in fact, in the direction that we initially assumed. Okay, so then let's go ahead and get FEF by doing a summation of forces in the horizontal direction. Summation of forces in the horizontal direction. I have a negative FEF times the ratio of the slopes, three-fifths. Three uh, and then, oh, actually, it would help if I only applied that to the applicable member. Uh, FEF is perfectly horizontal, so it will not have the slope. That is for our 50 kip force. I was just seeing if you were paying attention. Yeah, that's what that was. Um, so plus 50 kips times the ratio of the slopes to get the horizontal component. That is going to be 3 over 5. And that is then equal to 0. So FEF is equal to 50. Uh, if you solve for this, it will be equal to 50 times 3 fifths. 50 over 5 is 10 times 3 is going to be 30. So FEF is equal to 30 kips. And this is going to be positive because, again, when I move this to the right side, it's a negative. Divide by negative, you have a positive. So we have positive 30 kips. And this is a member force, unlike FY. So this will be 30 kips in tension. Uh, so 30 kips in tension. Now, let's look at uh, joint E. So I have uh, a tension force, that 40 kip force going away from the joint, the member force in member BE. 
Then I have my tension force in the bottom chord in our uh, in member EF of 30 kips, also in tension. Then I have a reaction force, EY, which I have pointing upwards. That's how I'll draw it on this diagram. And so this is EY. And then I have some unknown member force, member of FDE, the internal force in member DE. FDE. Okay, so, and I think that's it. Yeah, we don't have a uh, nice thing about this one is everything is nice and horizontal or vertical, so our summation of forces is going to be very easy. So let's go ahead and do a summation of forces in the horizontal direction. I'll have 30 kips. That's the force from a uh, member, the, the tension force in member FEF, and then minus FDE. And all of this is equal to zero. And so FDE is then equal to the same 30 kips. And then I can do a summation of forces in the vertical direction. And uh, I can get that, okay, I'll have 40 kips uh, pointing upward for the tension force in member uh, BE. And then I'll have plus EY, the reaction force at joint E. And then of course, all this is equal to zero. And so EY then, will be equal to negative 40 kips, or 40 kips downward. So EY is equal to negative 40 kips. And this really is another one of those cases of we, where we have opposing pairs of equal and opposite forces. I have one force going upward and another going downward, one going left and one going right, and they are all in perfect balance. Um, something, something, um, Thanos, something, something. Anyway, so <laughs> Thanos would really like this class. I think everything is perfectly balanced. He wouldn't like dynamics. Then you have accelerations. But I suppose from the point of view of acceleration-based free body diagrams or inertial free body diagrams, I suppose from that point of view, they are in balance. But uh, I think Thanos would like statics better than dynamics. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so let's go back to... Uh, our joint D here and solve for our, uh, let's see, our unknown FCD. So let's see here, get this down there. Now, we have FDE, and so all that's left is to get member FCD here. Oh, and F, uh, let's see, DE, again, this was 30 kips. And in tension. And so now I can just do the summation of forces uh, in the summation of forces in the x direction on this. And uh, that will be, let's see, I'll have FDE to the right and minus FCD. And all of this equals zero. And so FCD is equal to FDE which is equal to that same uh, 30 kips tension. That same 30 kip tensile force. Okay. So now we'll see, we can see that we actually have the same 30 kip tension force all the way across the bottom uh, chord of our member or the lower chord of our truss. And so we have, now we have all of our member forces and all that's left is to get our last unknown reaction which will be CY. And to do that, I pretty much just have to, well, I could do a global free body diagram, but I think it would be just as easy. I could return to a global free body diagram, but I think at this point, it will be just as easy just to uh, do a uh, joint equilibrium on joint C. So we have uh, the 25 kip force, FAC. So that's 25 kips compression. And that is at a slope of four to three. So four, three, and five here on the slope triangle. Then I'm gonna have, uh, let's see, I'll have a, a tensile force of 30 kips here. 30 kip, uh, 30 kip, uh, the tension force in um, uh, member uh, FCD. Then I'll have a 15 kip force to the right, which is CX and 
on this diagram, it is pointing to the, it, actually, actually, I'd say to the left, not to the right. On this diagram, I have it pointing to the right, but it's negative, so it's actually going to be going to the left. So we have a 15 kip force here, although that's not going to be too important for finding Cy. And Cy, I have initially, uh, I have assumed that it's going upward. And looking at these areas, that's actually going to be exactly the direction that it has to be. Because both, uh, both the uh, reaction force Cx and because both the reaction force Cx and the, mo the member force in Cd are perfectly horizontal, the vertical component of this force, of the force in member Ac, has to balance the, the, the entire reaction at Cy. So because this is compression, this one also sort of has to act like compression. Or in other words, if this member force is downward, this Cy has to be upward by simple equilibrium principles. And to get that number, it's just a little bit of trigonometry and some force balancing. I can just do a summation of forces in the vertical direction. And that's going to be, uh, let's see, that's that 25 kip compression force. So 25 kips times 4 over 5 to get the vertical component. And negative because it's pointing downward. And then plus Cy is equal to 0. So Cy is equal to, uh, let's see, that is going to be uh, 25 over 5 is 5. Um, times 4 is 20. So 25 over 5 is 5 times 4 is 20. So Cy is equal to 20 kips. And that would be upward. And as a quick check, we can even do equilibrium. Uh, let's do a really quick final check. This doesn't prove absolutely that all our answers are right, but um, it will not be possible to have the correct answers if we get the if we do not get a balance of forces globally in the vertical direction. So if we go back to considering this truss as a single rigid body and ignore all of the internal member forces, well, if we do that, what should happen is that all of our um, external forces, both reactions and applied forces, their vert all the all the vertical uh, components of those should sum to zero. Well, let's look at ignoring the internal member forces, looking just at the rigid body. Um, I have just four forces there. I have my reaction forces C, uh, Y, and F, Y. Actually, I have my three reactions, C, Y, uh, uh, C, E, Y, and F, Y. And I have my ex external applied force, D, Y, or just um, that my 20 kip force applied at joint D, I should say. And so um, then if I do, imagine doing a sum summation of forces in the vertical direction here. Well, the C, Y is pointing upward. It's a 20 kip force. And it balances this downward 20 kip force, which is applied. Then these two reactions, um, EY is pointing downward uh, with 40 kips, and FY is pointing upward uh, with, a, with a magnitude of 40 kips. So they balance each other out. In other words, when we return to the overall rigid body, uh, or the global free body diagram of the truss, we can see that this thing is uh, in static equilibrium, and that serves as a useful check for our work. Now, it's still possible that there is some uh, error somewhere in here, Though this method would be accurate, is an accurate method to solve the truss. I don't think there's any mathematical errors in here, but when you're doing problems on the fly, that is, of course, always a possibility. Anyway, um, I think that'll do it for this problem, and that'll do. All right, that'll do it for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, again, as a reminder, what we've covered today, we've looked at the method of uh, joints, looking at some more advanced examples or long-form examples of the method of joints, uh, applying the method of joints to find uh, internal member forces, reactions, etc. in a uh, statically determinate truss. Um, we looked at doing so when we can first solve for all the reactions initially, or when a even or even when a truss is externally indeterminate, um, and we can we have to start by finding forces interior to a truss before we can go on to solving for the um, uh, exterior reactions on a truss global free body diagram. Anyway, please let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you found this uh, enjoyable, or at least a little informative. Um, hopefully you found it a little bit interesting, and as we didn't, hopefully I didn't put you to sleep too quickly as I was working through all these equations. And hopefully I didn't make too many math errors as we went along, which is, of course, always possible. Anyway, again, please let me know if you have any uh, questions, if you have any comments or thoughts. Uh, please leave them below, um, et cetera, et cetera. Like, comment, and subscribe to make the robots happy. And regardless, look forward to seeing you all again soon uh, in the next lecture. And as always, thank you.